Good morning, church. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving and is happy and healthy and bellies are full. This morning, um, I want to talk to you about um, enduring hope. I prayed about this message and what the Lord would have us speak about this morning. And um, it's funny how he confirms things, but um, this morning I'm excited to talk to you about enduring hope. So let's first go to um, just the word definitions of both of them. Hope, first off, is a feeling or expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Another definition is a person or thing that may help to save someone. Grounds for believing something good may happen. And the last one, a feeling of trust. Endure. It can be used in two different ways. First, it can be used as an adjective. Continuing, long-lasting. can also be a verb. It can mean to suffer something painful or difficult, difficult patiently. And also to remain in existence, to last. So this morning, before we go into this message, let us pray. Father, I pray. I pray that you would give me the words to speak around these two words that you have highlighted in our walk of faith this morning endurance and hope. I pray this morning that our hearts would be filled with joy and the hope that we have in you, not just later, God, but now, the hope that we have in a living God, and it would cause strength and joy and peace and all the things that we need to endure, the race that you've marked out for us, God. I pray, God, that you would just allow your Holy Spirit to do what only you can do, to communicate and translate the Word of God effectively. Thank you, Father, for using me as a vessel. All glory is yours, in Jesus' name. So first, endure. We're going to go to Psalms 107, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Corinthians 13, 7. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And before we get any further, I want to talk to you about God's love. His love endures forever. And God loves you. God loves you forever. Not just for a moment when you're right and you got everything cleaned up and all the little boxes are checked and all the little ducks are in their row. But God loves you always, forever, steadfast, enduring. He sees you from the moment that you took your first breath to the moment that you took your last breath, and he loves you. I want that to come across strong and powerful this morning. I want it to break through any boxes that you've put yourself in where you think that he is outside of your love or you've messed it up too bad. He loves you. He loves your family. He loves everything about you even the most minute details. And he loves your family that way too. He loves me. He loves my family. And he has good plans for us. And I thank God for that. I thank God that his love is not like what we experience here. His love never fails. It's always there. It's constant. And I love the picture of heaven that we can think about the angels around him forever crying, holy, 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 worthy, worthy, worthy. And his very nature, the very, he is love. And they constantly are in this place of just crying out holy and worthy because he's so rich and good and powerful and majestic. God loves you. He is love. And I want you to hear that this morning. God loved you so much that he sent his son that you may know him to take on all the sins of the world. God loves you so much that the very word of God, which is he himself became flesh, he broke down that flesh and that iron wall that separated us from him is now forever torn. And if you want it more around that and just how the veil was torn, I just encourage you to go back to the amazing messages Nehemiah has already preached about the new covenant. And I thank God for that. I thank God that he is that conquering king that not just says he loves us, but he did something eternally so that we could have relationship with him. I want you to hear that this morning, church. I want that enduring love to really resonate in your spirit. 
and I want you to walk away with revelation, that that truth is unshakable. It's not based on your good works or you getting it right, which is just filthy rags before him. He loves you. It's his very nature. Anything other than that is not the truth of God. Moving forward, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12, 7. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? James chapter 1, 2, and 4. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet various trials, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And finally, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes, though, that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Let's talk about endurance for just a little bit. Because sometimes a great lie that we can believe as Christians is that God doesn't love us because we're going through something. I don't know many people that have faced this year and haven't been through it in a number of ways. I don't know many people that could just say, 2020, I was living the dream. And they might say that, you know, jokingly. But I know the people that I know, they've been met by various trials. But it produced something within them. <laughs> and I'm so thankful for that. Because God truly uses everything that the enemy means for harm to produce good. And those that love him are called by him. And I'm so thankful for that. When you train for something, we grew up, my family and I, um, we played soccer. And my dad was the athlete of athletes. He loved, you know, to see us out on the sports field and everything like that. And we would have to run and do all kinds of different strength training things and, you know, really stir all that stuff up. And while I love to run, I am not a very competitive person. And so I was the child that <laughs> he, the ball would be nowhere near me and my dad would still be talking to me <laughs> in a very passionate way about what I should be doing on that field at that time. Now, I know, I know my dad loves me, and I know that his heart was always good in all those different things, but sometimes when you're training and when you're running, it doesn't feel good. It's not like, wow, this is great. This is a lot of fun. But it produces something in you that can happen no other way. No pain, no gain, right? In order for, you know, you think about the actual physiology of a muscle, that in order for it to be built up, you have to literally tear it apart and break it down in order for it to grow, in order for all that blood and all the things to rebuild. Well, sometimes that's the way that it is with our faith. Sometimes the things that we think are solid, the people around us that we think are just unshakable, unmovable, the things that we put our hope in, even in our faith, the way we do our Christian walk, they might be good things, but they're not eternal things. And they're not things that which we can build our foundation upon. They're not the things in which he talks about the rock that we build our faith and the rock that is only him. 
He allows those things to be shaken. And I feel like this year has been a good example of those things. You um, look back into Hebrews and he talks about all the things that are shakable will be shaken so that we can look forward to a kingdom which is unshakable, eternal, enduring, steadfast, majestic, and holy. That's our God. So he allows us to have momentary trials and tribulations so that we see the things which are eternal and the things which aren't. The things that we think are Christian things, good things, but they're unfruitful. They might be even holding us back in some ways. And he is a God who does not lie. He's faithful. He shows us truth. And I thank him for that. I thank him that when we see things one way, he sees things from a whole different perspective. So let's talk about that for a second, and let's move on to hope. Hope, let's just define it again one more time so it's fresh in our minds. Hope, a feeling or expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen, a person or thing that may help or save someone, grounds for believing something good may happen, feeling of trust. I love to fly, and I've had the privilege um, to be on airplanes a couple different times. Not a lot. I don't have a lot of experience with this, but I love it. I, Nehemiah, is always, the times that we've flown together, he's always been really gracious, and I also think it's because I'm significantly shorter than he is. He can still see out the window, but I love to have the window seat. I love the feeling of takeoff. I love kind of that feeling where everybody else is just a little bit nervous, and this, your adrenaline starts pumping, and then you take off, and then little by little, you come up over the city, and you can see more of the city, and then eventually you're above the clouds, and it's just beautiful. And I love the different ways the clouds look, whether it's storming or whether it's a bright sunny day. There's all these different pictures of beauty that we don't get to see on this side of things. But on that side of things, it's just, I'm, I'm like a kid. Like, I, I love it. I love the way the light reflects it. It's just, it's something that is just incredible. It's an incredible feeling for me an incredible experience. And one of the things that I love about it the most is just, I think about it in regards to our faith. <laughs> How God is so high above all these things that we know. You know, we live in our, our perspective, our little three-dimensional perspective of life and circumstances and time and all these different things, but that's not him. <laughs> He's outside of time. He's outside of circumstances. He's outside of 2020. He's outside of 2021. He's outside and far beyond and far greater than all these constraints that we know. And I thank God for that. So I thank, I thank God that he's given me the opportunity to just get a different perspective through the avenue of flying to just help me to see that what I experience is so minute in what he is and what he is aware of all the time. <laughs> I love that. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trasp trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised up with him, and seated, with, and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Did you hear that, church? He seated you. He seated us with him in heavenly places. Not just later, but now, through Christ, the one who tore that veil has allowed us relationship and access to him, not just later, but now. I want you to hear that again. So we're just going to read this one again. Ephesians chapter 2. It's a, it's a really great book, Ephesians is it. So if you want to read that some more after this, that would be great. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dread in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him, seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Let's go to Psalm 2, verse 4. He who sits in heaven laughs. 
the Lord holds them in derision. And let's go to Isaiah chapter 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as, high, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. We have this as a sure and steady anchor of our soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain. Hebrews 4, chapter 16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that may, we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Okay, so let's, let's talk about this for a minute and let's just unpack these scriptures. I know I, we, all, we both kind of tend to be heavy on scriptures, but I want, I want to unpack this thing for just a second. Christ died. He tore the veil. He made a way that we could go into that holy of holies. He made a way for relationship, not just relationship after, you know, oh, when this life is over, but now. <laughs> he wants to hear your voice now. He wants to hear your prayers now. He wants to speak to you right now. He wants to comfort you right now. He wants to fill you with endurance and strength and hope right now. And he made a way through Christ, not because you're this really great person, but he loves you like crazy because of his love and his grace. He loves you and wants you right now. And he wants to give you hope right now. And he wants to fill you with strength through his spirit right now. So this morning or this evening or whenever you're watching this, merit, your, this message, I want you to be filled with endurance. I want you to be filled with hope, not just when this life is over, but right now, because we got a job to do, church. We have a lot of hungry and thirsty and broken people all around us all the time. And he wants to fill you and he wants to enlighten you right now. It's not gonna look the same way that it did in ages before. And I'm thankful. The church is a beautiful thing and anybody that wants to knock her and, and talk about what she's getting wrong and all that, you know what? Lord have mercy on your soul. The church and all of its people, I believe is beautiful. And I believe that it is the hope of the world. And I will live my life serving that church in whatever form he calls me to. So this morning, I want you to be filled with that, that you are the church. It doesn't matter your profession. It doesn't matter what your circumstances and situations are. If you know Jesus Christ and you, he has become your Lord and Savior, you are the church. You have an enduring hope that is life and hope and peace and all the things that the people around you need. And I pray that this morning that you would be able to break out of your boxes of disappointment or discouragement because things don't look the same and they're not going to look the same. But I pray that he would be able to speak to you, break through those iron walls, just like he did that day when the veil was torn, and he would begin to fill you. See, church, we have a hope a hope that's the anchor to our soul. It doesn't shift based upon situations and circumstances. It's an anchor to our soul. It goes down deep. And I thank God this, um, over the last few months, he's just been giving me um, pictures of trees and just a lot in his word where he talks about abiding with him and just allowing the roots to go down deep into him. And I, I'm so thankful for that because the roots, that's the part you can't see. That's the part that goes on the other six days of the week. <laughs> That's the part that happens when everybody's still asleep and you get to have those moments with him. That's the part that's pure and precious and unshakable. When the fires come, nobody can touch that. It's pure and it's intimate and it's good. And that's what he's calling us to. And I thank God for that. 
one of the days I was praying about everything and I was thinking about all the different things with the stay at home and and I was reminded of this story in um, Elisha where Eli he was incredibly discouraged. You know, Jezebel's out to kill him, you know, all these different things. And he thinks he's the only one, you know, don't we all think that we're the only one. But the Lord spoke to him and he, he opened up his eyes. He had hidden away other prophets in caves. He had opened up his eyes to a spiritual army <laughs> that was fighting on his behalf. Like God did a lot to encourage this man. So God, I pray, God, that you would encourage our hearts this morning that there is more going on behind the scenes than what media is telling us, than what we might see in the natural or that we ever will see in the natural. But that, that part, those roots, those things that, um, that he sees that go down deep, that's something that's of worth, that's of great worth to him. Let's end with these last two scriptures. Psalm chapter 100, or yeah. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good and his steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. So this morning as we're in Thanksgiving season and things look different and you might be discouraged, I pray that you would be able to hold on to the truth of an enduring hope that we have in Christ and through him. I pray that it would cause thanksgiving to rise up in you in just a new way, in a pure way, in a deep way, that you would enter into his gates. Maybe it's the very first time. Maybe you just went to being, you know, a quote-unquote Christian, but you've never really heard his voice. You've never really entered into the gates and tasted and saw that he was good. I pray that today would be that day for you. And I pray that when you enter those gates, you would find the one that your soul loves and you would hold him and you would not let go. And that would cause endurance and that would cause hope to rise up in you that you would never be the same, that we would never be the same. I thank God for who he is and I thank God for who you are and the hope that we have in each other for this season and for eternity of being with him the lover of our souls, and our great God. I pray. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Romans 15, 13. May you be blessed, church, and may you be blessed with all hope. In Jesus' name, amen.